Unsyndicated presents. Sean Belichian. Oh, listen. Okay, we're late. I know. Okay, Wiseacre, great. I'll be late to my own funeral. Okay, we get it. We get it all out. Funny time over. Good. Okay. So listen. The last couple minutes, watching these two. And when I say these two, this guy and Todd, who you can't see, like go through all this technical stuff, it was hysterical. And and I have a confession. I've probably said this a hundred times before during my like my career. I hate using that term, but um, and there are people out there who worked with me that would vouch for this, like Marty Martin. If you're watching, shout out to Marty. Um, I am the least technical person in the yes. history of t- least technical people. I yep. don't know. It gives me a headache. And these two, I'm I'm not joking. They were speaking like a different language (laughs) for about four minutes. Like, honestly, I thought, I thought I was like in Portugal and these two were like speaking fluent Portuguese to each other. And I'm just going, "Uh uh-huh. Uh-huh. I didn't understand. So, you got this like new system. No, no, no. You got this new system. Yeah, That's the thing. Yeah, of course, I. Of course, you it was have me. a new system. What's it? The roadcaster? Is that what it's? Yeah. Roadcaster. So it, we're just upping the level. Hi, Alex. For everyone that listens audio wise, which is sh- hopefully you're watching us and then going back and listening. And please like the YouTube channel, okay? Yeah. We, gosh, damn it! I don't ask for much. Go like the freaking YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah, what he said. Like it. I don't know what it means, but they, they're always telling me you have to tell people about the YouTube channel. So, gosh damn it, go like the YouTube channel. Like, right now, go like Unsyndicated, okay? Thank you. Subscribe, like, all that good stuff. Um, So, but audio-wise, everything's going to be elevated. It's going to sound a lot better. But, obviously, Sean and I do the show. I'm at home. He's at home because we live not right around the corner. He lives in other. Narnia. You, I, seriously. You live in Narnia. <laughs> To me. Well, look at Mike. Hi, Mike. Hi, Mike. I'm doing really well on my bets, in case you were wondering. Gosh, damn degenerates, <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, so yeah, it's just now Sean's gonna sound better, and I have to help him set it up and know this how is a it works. This is so a, it's gonna go really well. This is a disaster. Like that's <laughs> the that's the best thing that he told me. He he was like, What how did you put it? You were like your ADD. You better have you better turn your yeah, ADD I off told you or to take, take your, your medicine. Meds. Because, like, when this is done, this will be the funny part. He's going to have to show me how to do this. So, like, when my buddy uh, Jeff Husak comes over on Monday or when Mike comes over to do what the puck. Or Shep. Or Shep. I'm going to have to turn this machine on. Yes. (laughs) But we're going to have it. I want... The goal is yeah, you guys that are so Sean screwed. is going to know how to do it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and I think okay. we're going to pull it off. Yeah, that sounds really good. <laughs> okay, yeah. So have you enjoyed the games? Uh, very much so. Um, okay, so we were having fun with it the other day because and I I don't I don't I'm not going back on this, okay? Um, I you know, listen. My sports plate is full. And and it makes me laugh when people try to act like experts yeah. in the 72 hours before the tournament starts. It just makes me laugh. But okay? I knew everything. But listen to me. I'm telling you, their secret sauce is the games during the game. The, the, the games the, during the day. Yeah. That's the secret sauce of the tournament. Mm-hmm. Because, like, I'm not joking. And obviously, for rooting interest yesterday, the Spartans, that was... The most enjoyable game I've seen them play in a long, long time. Like, I I enjoyed it. I'm not going to lie to you, as we talked about last week with my buddy, Michael Bohenick. Um, it, it had kind of become a chore watching Michigan State basketball play. I enjoyed it. Like, they, they were yeah. enjoyable to watch. And then, you know, obviously, congratulations to Oakland. I mean, Greg Camp, he's just one of those guys. Just great guy. Got a chance to see him and do some stuff with him when I was at Fox 2. So, you know, the buzzer beaters, all that stuff, right? Yeah. Blake, I'm telling you, I was getting the same vibes this year for some reason as the year that they had the Stanley Cup playoffs in the afternoon. Yeah. That's, I'm telling you, that's the secret sauce. 
It, it's it, you know we're not used to it during the day, so if you get a great game, it just seems bigger and bigger and bigger, yeah. right? Yeah. No, I mean yesterday was like it was like nonstop, and there was great games. I feel like today they almost staggered it more. Like there was like two games, and they would end around the same time, and then two games, and they it was more staggered start. But yesterday it was just wall to wall, like nonstop. Yeah. And I'm trying to get work done. Well, you didn't say the thing, by the way. So we don't get in trouble. Can you say the thing? By the way, Blake comes to us from the Mitch Album Show on 760 WJR and Sports Rap on WJR. Thank you. You know, the show that fired me. Okay. So we got it out of the way. But listen, all all kidding aside, Blake, um, when I find myself enthralled, and when I say enthralled, I mean it. When I find myself sitting there watching the game between Colorado and Florida. I couldn't care less about either one of them, but completely enthralled by that, yeah. you know you're doing something yeah. right. Yeah, and at the same time, you have Yale taking down Auburn. Those That's nerds. awesome. That's it was, awesome. It was fantastic. I think it's fantastic. The SEC's dying right in front of our eyes. Oh, here we go with that right. Again, right? <laughs> it's like uh, Princeton Pete back in can the day. We, Did can, everybody love Princeton Pete? Can we talk about how Samford got absolutely screwed last night, though? Yes. That was such a bad call, and I don't know how. Like, we review everything. That mm-hmm. game had a million reviews. How is there no challenge? Like, how can they not be like, we challenge that? I, Because that was a horrible, egregious call. Terrible. It really was. It, no, no doubt about it. I, I Listen, the tournament's been fun. Like, I, it was funny because I had somebody, like, make a comment to me on Twitter that, that um, I'm trying to remember exactly how he said it, that that I, I wasn't taking the, the tournament seriously. And I said, no, maybe you didn't hear me. The tournament's one of the best sporting events of the year. Yeah. But I guess I'm one of the few people, and you were as well, I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I know about all these teams. I, no. I don't. All right. And, and and I think one of the bits in the last few years is people acting like they know about each one of these teams. Yeah. Stop it. You're, you're not like, honestly, you're not watching Colorado basketball. Knock it off. No, no you're not. I don't not believe yet. you for a second. Right. But I think to, like with everything, like for me, watching it, like I'll be the first to admit, I enjoy March Madness even more because I'm a gambler, mm-hmm. because I have action on these games. So it makes me more into the game more than anything else. It all comes back to gambling. It really does. It's, I'm telling you, one day we're going to get one of those sports psychs on here, mm-hmm. and and he's going to have a field day with you. Yeah. Like they, like seriously, everything comes back to gambling with you. It does. At least he's honest, right? I mean, that's what I was doing about the whole tournament hey, thing. I, I had Duquesne money line yesterday. I was very happy. <laughs> Mike, I'm an expert on Longwood. <laughs> yes. See? Yeah. That poor uh, coach. Jim said, I'm watching Kane's caps with the sound down. Tough for the caps without uh, Wilson for six games. I love Willie. Willie's my guy. I'm going to try to get a hold of him real soon. Last wink, night was wink. ultimate three TV watching. Yeah, it was had the wings on. Two college basketball games on. I was, I was living my best life. Yeah, it. it you know, that's for me. Um, look, hockey comes first. I'm not going to lie to you, but you know, when the Oakland game was going all Oakland, uh, that was one of those things. To be honest with you, it was. I found myself kind of looking towards that TV a little bit more. You know, yeah. with with you know Oakland on the precipice of of that big upset. So I had Kentucky in my Final Four. So did I. Yeah. So, did so I. there was that. Yeah, so did I. But I'm an expert. I know everything. Oh, I'm an expert as I well. I also had Yale, though, winning. I had them beating Auburn. So um, does that count for anything? You know, when we did our thing the other day, I, I got, we got a couple of them. Like, we, we, you, your problem with the Mormons, I still, we need to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. But we got that one right. Duquesne. Yep. yep. I couldn't tell you the first thing about them, but uh, there was another one. I think I got another 12 right. Um, and I, I can't remember which one, but I, there were a couple. Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, we did good. You know what's funny? I always do well in the early rounds, but you know the way these dumb tournaments are 
like like I had mm-hmm. in the dumb bracket that I'm in, like I had, I think, like the second or third most wins already. But because like Kentucky was out and some of my, you know, yeah. elite eight teams were out, it's like, eh, good luck with that. Yeah, you I'm know? in dead last in my pool. Dead last. Are you really? Yep. <laughs> Look at Jay. I watch 100% of 100% of the game, 0% of the time. Jason, you get what I'm saying? It, it It's so disingenuous this time of year. I'm sorry. It just is. I think a lot of guys in the media, that's why they call it March Madness. You know, in dumb comments like that. Like, that. like, stop it. No, uh, you don't like that bit. Kentucky you missed the dance when they had Nerland's Noel. Yes. They were, because he got hurt. So they missed out. They only had 19 wins. Uh, I Dan, don't know why. I know Dan that. Dan said yesterday was a good trifecta for sure with the Wings, State, and Oakland all winning. Uh, Michigan State ladies, of course, we talked to Coach on that show that I got fired from. Um, they fell today, unfortunately, but uh, it's just the beginning. Uh, tomorrow could be another one of those fun days. It yeah. really legitimately could, especially if you're talking about the green and white, Dan, uh, big hockey game tomorrow night down at Munn as, as well, and that's pretty cool. Uh, listen, I want to get more of your thoughts, Blake, on uh, the tournament. I also want to get your thoughts on um, the Goo Goo Babies with this snow stuff. Like, oh come on, man. Like, are, are you new to this state? Like, knock it off already. Especially, like, people like Jason. I know you're in the UP. They laugh at us. So, you never uh, told trolls. me. Who do you have winning it all? I can't go against UConn. I could. Okay. I could. I, could I did. Ahead. Did you really? I have Creighton. I went outside the box. I went with Creighton. Big Adam Creighton? Yeah. There are three people that get that reference. When I say Big I'm Adam not, Creighton, and I'm not one of you them. are not one of them. Uh, you know what? I bet you Mike will. And Is it I bet, a movie reference? I bet Jason will. Um, he's a hockey player. Okay. And he played for the Blackhawks. And back in the day, Mickey Redmond could not say his name without saying the word big in front of his name. Okay. So his name wasn't Adam Creighton. It was Big Adam Creighton. Yeah. So every time Creighton does something, I can't help but think of, well, Big Adam Creighton. Okay. But that's just the way that my brain works. Hey, can we tell you about the Rockers? Uh, the Rockers in action, as a matter of fact, right now. The playoff bound Motor City Rockers, I might add this weekend. Make sure you check the Rockers as they hit the road to face off against the Columbus River Dragons in an electrifying three game series. Do not miss a minute of the action. Tune into the River Dragons YouTube channel to stream the games live. Okay, they're playing right now. It's a game that started at 7.35. You can check them out tomorrow night at 7.05. Sunday, another matinee game, 4.05. It will be a thrilling weekend of hockey, to be sure. Uh, Todd said, Al Bork was my favorite flub. Kirk Hunter, see, okay, there's there's three people that now got okay. the reference to Big Adam Creighton. Uh, surely, there's no doubt about that. Um, anything jump out to you that you that you want to finish with the tournament about before? There's a couple things that I need to get off my chest. Tennessee like, looked awesome. They're very good at basketball. I think I had Tennessee going to the final. Four. I really want Tennessee to play Texas because I want the back bowl. Then we talk about that. Like that the back and- bowl. I'm um, drawing a blank on the name of the Tennessee coach that used to be at Texas. So I want the revenge factor. I want the back bowl, all of that. And then, yeah, no, I mean, that's, it was just a lot of fun games, a lot of fun games, a lot of action. I I'm was in you. and out of watching it. Cause as I said, I was working, but it was, it was fun. It is. I'm telling you, I'm convinced the secret sauce is during the day because like Mm -hmm. I was sitting there yesterday at 1215, like downright giddy to watch a Spartan team that hasn't, I I don't care if you're the biggest Spartan fan in the world. They haven't been real fun to watch. And I like, I found myself downright giddy yesterday afternoon when they came up. Do you think they're going to keep it close against North Carolina? Cause that spreads only like. Two and a half. I that really surprised me, me and I'm I'm not a gambler. You're you're gonna have to explain to me the 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 rationale behind that. Are they trying to suck Spartan fans in? Is that what the rationale is? I think that they're trying to get people to bet North Carolina because it's such a tight spread, and they that means good things for MSU. Okay, so that would be my guess, but I don't know. I I don't. I I would have to look at where all the public money is on it. 
Um, Jim said, I'm picturing you late for the cast, waiting for the wings to be ready. Avs on at nine. Curious what qualifies a hockey team as a dynasty? That's a great question. Can I tell you? I, I have a very strong opinion on that. Uh, dynasty is not a word that should just be thrown around. Shouldn't just be just like great. You know, I, I always say one of the best things I heard my pal, Matt Shepard say, and I give him credit for this line all the time is we throw around the word great too often. Dynasty is a word that I don't think should just be tossed around the way it is. Um, so with that being said, if, if you, if you win four in a row, you're a dynasty. If you win, let's say, I don't know. Like, do you think the Chiefs are a dynasty right now? Like, are we in the Chiefs dynasty? No. Really? Mm-mm. No. Okay. I don't. If you if you win, how about, let me, can I cut, I'll make three out of four. I'll, 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 that's where I'll go. If you, if, if you, if you go three out of four champions, I think you could, you could say dynasty. How's that? See, I'm a three out of five guy. Are you really? Yeah. You win three out of five. You, you own basically half of a decade. You're a dynasty. Okay. You could that's do that. That's why I think the chiefs are a dynasty. Okay. I, I can see the argument. By the I, way, I, I won't. I won't argue too much with that. I won't argue too much. Fifty-four percent of the money is on uh, UNC. Yeah, it um, spreads out to four now. So, and I know a lot of Wings fans probably get agitated. The Wings era can be described as they were, they were the measuring stick for the National Hockey League for about a fifteen-year span, okay. right? But I, I'm not going to call it a dynasty because you know so you win in 97 and 98 and then you win again four years later and then you win again what six years after that four cups in that time frame is outstanding they they were the measuring stick i mean they were the premier but that doesn't make it a dynasty it's more of an era than a dynasty yeah i think so too same thing with all the success that that sidney crosby had right yeah. I, I mean outstanding no doubt about it i do i call him a dynasty no i i i don't i do agree with um what adam said though hockey it i think it's way more difficult to cr- like start a dynasty especially today yeah especially today the the way the league is set up i mean that's why what Tampa almost did. I mean, Tampa almost going three in a row was insane. Yeah. I mean, it really was. Um, uh, Eric said, uh, say what up, Eric? Say what up, Eric? How's up, that? Eric? How are you, Eric? Um, Gary said the wings were about as close as you could get from 97 to 02. Gary, I agree with you. I'll even take it. I'll expand it to 08. I really will. Because in that mix, you had some damn good teams that unfortunately got upset in the playoff as well. And then that 08 team is really special, in my opinion, for a couple reasons. I think a lot of people thought that cost certainty was going to catch the wings, and they ended up dominating that year, and they ended up dominating with a guy named Chris Osgood. Shout out to Ozzy. I saw Ozzy the other day. How are you, buddy? Um so I, I think I have to include that group in the mix as well. So when you're talking 95, you go to the finals, 97, you win it, 98, you win it, 02, you win it, 08, you win it. That's a great, you use the word era. Yeah. That's a great era. Do I call it a dynasty? No, no. Uh-uh. So when, what's the last dynasty we saw in sports? The Pats? I'm going to go with, in hockey, it's the Oilers. Okay. In, in in hockey, it's the Oilers because the the Oilers won in eighty four, eighty five. Boy, I can't remember who won in eighty six, eighty seven, eighty eight, and ninety. Okay. That was that was pretty impressive to go five out of seven. Yeah, that's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, so that's crazy. I think you have to, in my mind, yeah. If if the Chiefs win again next year, then you have to talk about it. In my mind. If they if they do it again next year, then we have to go. Okay, now we have to look at this era and say, all right, is this era now a dynasty? How's so that? What if they lose and then win again, though? Then are they still in? Can we talk about that two years from now? Yeah, we can. I they're so, they're so good. 
Uh, Gary said, uh, so much damn talent in that time. My Lord, it would be something to get even close to that again. No doubt. Uh, Todd said, wings needed 96 to be there. I don't even remember the context in which it came up. I think you were part of the conversation, but somebody was trying to give me the business about the wings bombing Patrick Waugh and getting, getting him traded to Colorado. Yeah. And I, I said, I had a conversation with Scotty Bowman about this. Think how many more Wings Cups we would have seen if that never happened. I mean, yeah. we, we would have missed out on the best rivalry in hockey over the last 30 years. Make no mistake about it. We would have missed out on that. But how many, I think for sure they went in 96. I don't, without a doubt, they went in 96. Do they possibly go four in a row? And win in 99 because that was a pretty darn good team that just ran out of gas against Colorado in second round. You know, I, that's isn't that interesting? And then if you remember, Colorado beat him again in 2000. That was kind of a no series. Uh, Colorado just dominated him. And it's it's an interesting thought. You know, how how many more would they have won without him? Yeah, you know, that is you would know better than me, though, because I was like six. Uh, Gary said, are the Chicago Bulls a dynasty? I will include them under this criteria. What they won. So let's think 91, 92, 93. Then Houston won 94, 95. Then uh, Chicago won 96, 97, 98. That's that three of four thing. That's yeah. six of eight. I have to include. Yeah, 100%. I have to. That Just one man's opinion. I mean, whatever your opinion is, you know, yeah. doesn't make me right. I just... I'm going to stand on the, I think the D word is thrown around way too easily. The, you Pat, know? the Pats had two. Yeah. They had two. Yeah. Separate dynasties. Yeah. Which is insane. Uh, Alex said, Sean, don't forget about Montreal winning six cups in nine years during the 70s. I have to go. I mean, you you start with 76 through 79, though, including, you know, that 77 team that was a wagon. They, you know what their record was? 60 wins. Eight losses and twelve ties. That's that's insane. Eighty game schedule. They lost eight games. That's insane. I mean, it was just just an absolute Wait, wagon. We're college football nerds. What's a, is it? Different rules for college? I see. I don't think you can. I think you can put like what Nick Saban did on a pedestal. But it's not a. Dynasty. But it's not a dynasty. Okay. Right. Okay. I I don't I don't think you can throw that. The D word around. Like if you win three out of four, I think in college you're a dynasty. One hundred percent. If Georgia comes back and wins next year, then then we have to sit back and go, Kirby's got himself a dynasty. We have yeah. to say that. Yeah, it's a good question. College, it's a little bit different rules. But yeah, yeah. Uh, what did what did off the ear pod say? Voting. I don't know. Oh, okay, maybe uh, is. Is Joe Biden a dynasty? Is that what he was getting at? We're we getting to that. Boy. Sorry, I forgot where I was. That's all right. <laughs> um is there a modern day uh is there a modern day con Smythe player who is invisible during the season like Claude was? Uh, I, I think invisible is hard, harsh, Jim, but um I'll think. I'll think for a second. What Wait. did uh so how important was last night's wings game? Like now are we back to they could make the playoffs? I never left that. Okay. I, I don't think Mike left that either. If Mike's still in there. I don't I don't think I don't think Mike ever left that either. Um how important was it? I think the most important thing for me, Blake, was they played well. That yeah. was that was the most important thing. Because as I talked about, it was great being at the Columbus game. It was great to get the late goal to tie it. It was great to get the overtime winner from Patty Kane. But they didn't play well against a really crappy team. Yeah. No offense to Columbus. You're you're garbage. Um, so that was, I think that hid some things. But to come out and play that the way that they did, um, you know, and you have to give Dylan Larkin credit. You know, I mean, not only did he provide the boost, just being there, but he provided the boost with the goals and everything. Um, I know you talked about him, you know, not being like a superstar in this league, mm -hmm. but he clearly means a lot to that team. What, no whatever question. it is, he means a lot to that team. 
and they play different when he's in the lineup. I know I've said this a thousand times, and I still don't understand why people get mad at me for saying this. I like Dylan Larkin. No, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. want Dylan Larkin. He's not a superstar. No. He's not he's not Iserman. He's not Fedorov. He's not Ledstrom. And that's okay. And somehow people get mad at me for saying that. I don't I don't get that. You gotta be defensive about your guy though. Yeah. It's like me with JJ McCarthy. I gotta I gotta defend my boy. Period. That's just stupid though. We talked about that a couple months ago, and I think now what what you hear people saying about JJ and um, more importantly, what teams are finding out what the league thinks about J.J. I, I told you two months ago before yeah. he even ascended. That's just stupid. The guy yeah. makes plays. Yeah. Period. I don't, I don't care who you root for. I mean, you, you, you know, there are some people that can never be objective. I Listen, you know who I root for. Go green. But, yeah, J.J. McCarthy's a stud. And I, I we talked about it, I think, our first show. There was no doubt in my mind that guy was going to be a first-round draft pick. None. Zero. Zilch. You know what? I can't wait, though. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of our, we were talking about our mutual friend Dave Mm -hmm. earlier. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for J.J. McCarthy to go to the Broncos. And if they ruin J.J. McCarthy, the wrath that I will just give to Dave Reeker will be unmatched. (laughs) It really will. (laughs) Adam said he's a leader. Some superstars aren't good leaders. That's a very legitimate point. It, it's interesting how when you think of some really good players who never wore a C, I think it's, you know, most do, but there are a few if you look back at history, and I think that kind of tells you a lot. Uh, Eric asked about the poster in back of you guys. I think I explained this on a previous show, but that is an uncut card collection from uh, 1991 to celebrate the NHL's uh, 75th season, they came out with a special uh, edition of Stars of Yesteryear, where with a lot of these guys, not only did they have like a picture of them from the 1940s or 50s, but also a modern day picture in their jersey. So in some of these pictures, you you can see, um, you know, like there's one with Sid Abel. Sid Abel's, you know, ancient in that picture, rest his soul. Um and I know there's one with uh, Jean Beliveau and Emile Bouchard from the Habs. And um, so, yeah, somebody was kind enough to get that to me. And it's, um, yeah, it's a pretty cool thing there. So now you know the story. Um, did you have snow over in Narnia today? Because, yeah. Okay, because this was one of those weird ones. I know people downriver, like, didn't have, like, my boy John Kidd from State Champ, shout out. They got none? He got none. Like, he took a picture from oh. his porch. There was nothing there. Listen to me. It was it was pouring at about 9.15. Yeah. I mean, like, 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 seriously, like, blizzard crap, right? My wife woke me up to clean off her car at about 8 a.m., because I'm a good husband, and that's what I did. Aww. So I went out there, started her car, cleaned it off. And by the time she left for work a half hour later, like it could have been cleaned off again. It was Aww. crazy. Isn't he a nice husband? I'm a good husband. I didn't think I was going to have to snow blow, but I did. I snow blowed, and I always do my neighbor's house, too. Shout out to George and Andy. I Changy. couldn't pull in your driveway, though, because you didn't do the driveway. Uh, why would I do that? I have a truck. You knew I was coming over. I've, You've seen my exactly. car. Why would I do that? <laughs> if you want your guard For landscape, friends, Sean why, can you help park you. in front of my house. Walk up. That's true. I don't. I'm kidding. My truck, I just put in that four-wheel drive. It's like Bigfoot going over the, the hills and everything. I didn't shovel anything. These people that lose their mind over this, though. I, oh, I don't. Yeah. Dude. I was wearing Did shorts last Did you just move week. here? Like, it's Michigan, man. Come on. This, there, there's nothing. Here, listen. Newsflash. There's a really good chance we're going to get a significant snowfall again in the next couple of weeks. Into into April. Newsflash. I, what, what, yeah. What's up with the Google babies? People <laughs> crying about it. If you don't like the weather, just <laughs> wait five minutes. That's that's such a good bit. Jeez. Uh, Eric said, who wins the AL East? I'm a Yanks fan. You know me. Uh, that Orioles team, dude, I still like that Orioles team, right? They kind of, you know, it was like the 30 year rebuild with the Orioles, but that they, they've got a ton of talent over there. Right. I, I I like the Orioles. I do know if, you know, we, I think we've talked about this enough just as 
when when baseball starts getting talk, I just yeah, okay. I told you, for me, it wasn't like for whatever reason. My son just became a huge baseball fan, and uh, because of that, you know, we had season tickets for years, and uh, I love it. Like seriously, yeah. I, I I like going, to and games I and never ever but... thought that I would be that. I never thought that I would be that guy. See, Jason is one of those guys. He's up in Escanaba, right? These guys just laugh at us. I, I talked to my buddy up in Houghton today, and uh, seriously, he goes, hey, how's it going? And I go, oh, we got about four inches. He goes, oh, my gosh, did, did it end civilization? And I said, yeah, pretty much. I left for work 20 minutes early today, and I was 20 minutes late still. Really? Yes. It was that bad? Well, in 94, was down to like one lane. So I had to take, uh... I had to do the round. I took 696 to 75 to the Davidson to the lodge, that whole thing. I uh stupid. I have a um a, a silly little thing. I like to listen to the traffic and weather station when you have days like this, just to hear all the and obviously I'm not making fun of anybody getting in an accident, but a minimal snow causes so many problems and it just yeah. doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. It's like are you new here? So when I was down in Carolina, um, we played we. Sorry. Well, I I mean, I was doing the broadcast, so I can say we. Yeah. We played the Blackhawks on a Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever the case may be. I'm not joking. They had a trace amount of snow. And when People I said, lost their mind, it was they were dumping sand all over the road. They were having like breaking news stories. The intersection in, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm going, are, are you serious? Yeah. So then I got to see how our friends in the UP react towards us. Cause it's like, this isn't new. Yeah. Like, what, do, what are you guys crying about? I, I don't, I don't get it, but they were, I'm not joking. It was. And when I say trace, I mean, the grass was covered a little bit. There was just a little bit on the ground, but people people don't know how to cope. It's, it's amazing how that works, you know? It's also very weird. Like, we didn't get ice this winter. Like, I felt bad for all the ice fishing people. They had, like, a week. Yeah, maybe. I guess you're right. Yeah. We really didn't have no, ice. No, you're right. That's like, a, no pond hockey that's was another, going on. That's another unbelievable bit. What? Ice fishing? How, how do you get stuck out there, man? I don't get it. Every year, the Coast Guard has to go right rescue somebody, right? Well, and you know how it is out over by me. Like Lake St. Clair, everyone ice fishes over there. It's insane. And I'm like, you couldn't pay me to go sit in a wooden box and Did I do, do that? whatever. No. Oh, look at Yeah, there it is. Mass hysteria, dogs and cats living together. There it is. That's, it, those look like yeah. my death storm pictures. That's a, that's a bit I do on <laughs> you Facebook. You someone was taking over. Your, yeah. Did I, I do that? Did I do that? Um, well, see, to your point, you know, my grandfather's place was on the other side of, of Lake St. Clair in, in, in Stony Point. And it was amazing how many people you'd see the cutters go out there every year. Every we'd, we'd be sitting in my grandfather, oh, yeah. grandfather's place in, in Stony Point, Ontario. Yeah, there goes the cutter rescuing some idiot out there. It's like, come on, dude, yeah. what are you doing every year? You know, it's like. Calumet got four inches while I typed this. That's great. <laughs> Home of the Copper Kings. Shout out to the Copper Kings. Coach Giacchino. Good good dude up there. All right, so I wanted to ask you this. It's a Friday night. We wanted to have some fun. Um, do you have guilty pleasure music that you would never dream of confessing that you like, that you're willing to confess right yeah. now? Do you really? I think actually. Now, do people know this? Do people some know Some people this? know. Like my wife obviously knows, and like so, I like I I'm big into boy bands, huge into boy bands. Always have been. Go like, on. Growing up, I was I was I went and saw the Backstreet Boys when I was like, my, I think my mom's in the chat. She could say how old I was. I was very young when they were big. And then, like, One Direction. This is making me so happy. Look at your wife <laughs> yep. even chimed in no, 100%. No, that's my mom. Oh, that's your mom? All <laughs> yeah. right. Mom, wife, whatever. So, All right. yeah. No, boy bands. One Direction, still to this day. Now, do 100%. people know this, or is this, is this like, are you coming out of the closet? So Some people know this. Oh, good, good. I'm glad. Some people, that, I don't Isn't care. it funny when you get to that point in your life where you don't care anymore? Yeah, no. I, yeah, I don't Because care. I was always the guy, Metallica, Ronnie James Dio. ACDC, Guns N' Roses, love them all, 
But privately, I listen to Air Supply. Your mom will know. You won't know. I have no clue who that is. Okay. I, yeah. th th there you go. See, look at everybody. everybody. So it, there, there was one. Ask your mom about Air Supply. Mom, you can tell them all about Air Supply. Um, it, it, there, listen, there are certain songs. Like, do you remember this one? Might You were younger. Savage Garden. I knew I loved you before I met you. Never heard. Oh, I just, beautiful. it comes on. It's beautiful. I posted like a Gloria Estefan song, Barry Manilow. He's got so many good songs. These are things that I, yeah. I would never admit this stuff. I would never admit this stuff when are. I was younger. Yeah, I don't. There is a funny story. Mike, if you're still in the chat and, and I'm talking to Matt, he, what did your mom say? He'd know if he heard them. It's dad's music. All right, so I want some of you to be brave. Look at that. Look, there's my boy, Air Supply. Todd's going to get us taken off of YouTube. Is that all out of love? <laughs> That's all out of love, isn't it? Right? Yeah, there's there's all out of love right there. Yeah. Uh, David, David, props to you. You're confessing. Neil Diamond. Good for you. Yeah, isn't it funny? Like when you like but somehow you're you know, I don't listen to that stuff, right? Yeah. So Mike, I know you have the worst memory ever. Uh, my buddy Mike. I hope Mike remembers this. We were at this party over a mutual friend's house. He was that guy that always had parties. And Todd said if we play less than three seconds, we're good. <laughs> good to know. We were at this party and we had the radio on. And for some reason, a song you wouldn't expect to be on this particular station came on. Do you know the song Take Me Home by Phil Collins? Yeah. It, it's like my Zen song. Like to this day. It's, it's like, I don't okay. know why. It's it's just kind of like, ah. And so somebody went to turn off the radio. And I threatened them with an eternal beating. Bodily harm. And they like like looked at me like, dude, it's Take Me Home by Phil Collins. And I was like, if you turn off the radio, like, I will really split your nose. I will. Like, everybody made fun of me for like five minutes. But you know what? I didn't care. I don't think. No, that... can I tell you? I didn't care. Yeah. Because I got to listen to Take Me Home. Okay. So the whole time they're going, I can't believe you listen. Phil Collins? And I was like, dude, this song's great. See, I, so I don't think that you should make fun of anyone's music choices. Like, people should be able to like what they like. And be good. But if you're going to make me sit through it and I hate it, that changes everything. Mm -hmm. That's where we get off the rails a little bit. All right. So he's saying I need to listen to Bone Thugs and Harmony version of Take Me Home by Phil Collins. Okay. I got to be honest with you. I think that's kind of like disrespectful. Like, I got to be honest with you. Like, it's Phil, man. It's Take Me Home, right? Mike, please tell me you remember that if you're still in the chat. I know you have the worst memory ever. That's his words, not mine. Uh, but we were literally at a party, and everybody's like, you want to leave the radio on for Phil Collins? And I'm like, yes, yeah, okay. this song's great. Alex said, as a heavy metal fan, I confess that I listen to Duran Duran. There you go. Are you familiar with Duran Duran? No. I. You know me. I'm movies oh, we should have it we should one day we're gonna have it david said i believe it has to do with uh what your parents listened to when you were at an impressionable age my parents loved neil diamond mine for me it's hootie and the blowfish still to this day hootie uh, and the blowfish gary loved said it. the same people dogging you for liking phil all love in the air tonight yeah isn't that amazing how that works out that's true yeah uh melissa said yes you do yeah hootie and the blowfish is awesome awesome listen that was one of the most fun concerts i ever went to. i wanted to go and the, yes the I, most recent time they're here so bad i went to their concert in like 1995 and it was just fun there's a song at the end of their first cd that i think every sports fan should listen to have you ever heard of it now you have to you'd have you mom have. does he do you have the cd at home you you have to let him have Apple music. Or you know Sean, what? Yeah, like, you could probably find it. Yeah. I don't but I'm it was one of those hidden tracks, but it's called Fairweather Johnson. And okay. I have to explain to you what Fairweather Johnson was about okay. because it's a song that we can all relate to. They were ripping on a mutual friend of theirs who was like a quote big sports fan, but he only liked the teams that win. And so the whole song is talking about how That's the name of the album. But 
there was a hidden track called Fairweather Johnson. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Now you need to listen to it. Okay. Because we all have that friend that just like he jumps from team to team. You're explaining oh, me. You are not that guy. You are <laughs> not that. My Georgia Bulldogs, man. And then all of a sudden he's going, my Michigan Wolverines. Screw that. You are not that guy. No. But we we all have that guy, right? Man, man my Chiefs. How, are you going to deny my Chiefs? I don't want to be with you. That was a fun song, right? Great song. Great song. I'm still a baby because the Dolphins make me cry. Yeah. Like, and, you, and you insert your favorite team in there. Yep. The Wolverines, the Habs, whatever the case may be. You know, we can all like, relate to it. He And I have a soft spot for him because he'll like delay the start of concerts if South Carolina is playing because he's such a huge I Gamecock think that's fan. great. Good it's for awesome. him. Awesome. Isn't that Scott said ACDC? See, that's I, I was like always that guy, but then like quietly. And it's funny, a lot of times, especially the older you get, like you have this conversation with your friends. And like my my one buddy, Steve, if you're watching, when I confess that yes, I know air supply songs, and yes, I can sing word for word with many of them, he kind of went, So do I. And it's like liberating. You got it off your chest. You've been living with this horror for so many years. Yeah, you got it off your chest. Yeah. KB's gotten me into Motown. Oh, Motown's outstanding. Oh, it's, I mean, it's it incredible. Is, it is. I'm not ashamed of that whatsoever. But it just was like like you were, we were talking about. It wasn't played in my house for whatever reason. My parents just hated me, so there was no Motown played in the house. So my mom was a big Motown fan, and my dad was a big Beatles fan. Okay. And for some reason, in their world, they couldn't coexist. Right? Yeah. They couldn't. And I was like, I like both of them. Yeah. And I'm not. Now, listen, do I consider myself more of a Beatles fan? Well, yes. And, of course, my dad and I, our running joke is he always liked the early Beatles stuff. Whereas I like, you know, White Album, in particular, you know, Abbey Road. My dad would always go, I didn't like them then. They were all doped out. You know, typ typical by the book cop and stuff. I didn't listen to them back then. That's when they, that's when they got all doped out. And, you know, they just look scraggly. Like if I saw John Lennon on the street, I'd put cuffs on him. Yeah, the, I mean, typical dad stuff, you know. Uh, Chip said, we used to signal the party was over by playing Pat Benatar. <sighs> do you know Pat Benatar? I know. Okay, the, what's do? that one song? Heartbreaker, yeah. Dream Maker. Tina Turner, it's my grandmother's fault. Tina's great though. Yeah. Like simply the best. What a great song. I wouldn't we're allowed to like that, aren't we? We're not gonna get shit for crap. It doesn't for matter. That. It doesn't matter. I'm allowed to like what I like in the Tina presence Tina. of my own car. I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, listen, we're gonna get some final thoughts in just a second. Can we talk to you about our friends at Wealth Advantage, however? Uh, special shout out. See the guy in the right? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. My buddy Jeff Hughes. We can't play that song either. No, we can't. But he's he's gonna be on with us on Monday night. He wanted to talk some draft stuff with us. And if you're ready to take charge of your financial for future, look no further than the Wealth Advantage Group, located in historic downtown Northville and owned by those two guys with over 20 years of industry experience. They understand that your financial goals are as unique as you are. That's why they offer personalized expert guidance to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning. Now, whether you're saving for retirement, getting ready to sell your company, already in retirement, whatever the case may be, they can help guide you through every step of your financial journey. They work with clients throughout all stages of life and have clients in over 20 different states. The investment world is a complex one, but if you're ready to start taking your finances more seriously, it's time to work with a couple of experts. Reach out to my friends, Mike and Jeff, at the Wealth Advantage Group, 248-773-8574, or view their website at www.thewealthadv.com. Uh, Eric said, good show. Go color that I can't say. You know that. Go I'm blue. never going <laughs> to give up on that. National champions. Yeah, you got the bragging rights. Um, Can I tell you something? You can tell me I've anything you want. thinking about all this entire You show? think that Michigan State is going to beat Michigan tomorrow in the Big Ten championship game at Monterey? You, you, you would know better than me. I think Michigan has a really good – that's a 50-50 game the way Michigan's playing right now. 
I'm going to take Michigan State. Talent-wise, um, Michigan is starting to realize all the talent that they have. That's on BTN, right? Yeah. They're starting to... Three screens. Again tomorrow. I miss um, calling those I'm games. Three, that was one of the dumbest things I ever did. I'm three legs away from hitting a seven-leg bar line. Are you really? And I need Purdue to win by over 26 and a half. And I feel very dirty rooting for Purdue. I have Purdue. I would too. Alabama minus nine and a half. And then Houston minus 23 and a half. That, that's what I need to win. You know I won six in Vegas, right? I told yeah. you that, right? That was so funny. We but have to go to the blue man group. We I, have to go to the blue man group. <laughs> I had the under. And this was like, I just put this together like while I was working. Under in the... New Mexico Clemson game that hit at UConn minus 27 and a half, the over in Yale Auburn, and then Colorado minus one and a half. So I'm over halfway home. Can I ask you a question? And I I I, I don't want to ask this question with your mom in there. That's fine. No, I'm but I'm gonna ask it. Do you think you have a gambling problem? No. I genuinely say no because I have not bet a single anything since the and since the Super Bowl. You really haven't? Not a single thing. You really, really haven't? No. Good for you. March Madness, football season, that's it. So do you know why I don't get this on my phone? Because I know I would be placing bets all the time. Yeah. You have to police yourself. I, and, and I'm not even being funny. I That's why I don't, I don't get them. You, you know what? I will go if I'm in a place where I can place a wager, I will place a wager, but I know if I'm sitting, if I'm sitting there, especially those in-game bets. Oh, yeah. I don't care what anybody says. You, you. That's how you really lose your money. Ninety nine percent of the time, you know how the game's going to go. You think? Uh, do you, you think know o your limit? See, yeah, Come see? on, get in your back. Do you think Otani uh, was betting on games? One hundred percent. As long as we're one hundred. That's the thing that scares me about all of it, though. Like I'm very pro gambling. As long as you can, like, stay within your limits, you know your bounds, everything. Like I'm very pro gambling, but so am I. I want the I want to know that the game is on the up and up. And if players and translators and whoever else is involved in this stuff, I have no way of knowing that everything's on the up and up. And that ruins it for me. No, that ruins I get it. sports. No, Blue Man Group was good. No, no doubt about it. But the agitation of we're gonna be late, and I kept saying. Give me one more minute. I'm going to win a significant amount of money. Yeah. If you just let me let me watch the end of this game, and as long as Tim Tebow doesn't score one more touchdown, I'm going to hit a 16 parlay and hit a significant amount of money. So yeah, no no disrespect to the gray green blue man group, whatever. No, it was actually they pulled me out of the crowd and did one of their wacky antics with me. It was oh, kind of really? funny. Yeah, was, I don't know what I was doing. But yeah, it was one of those things. Um, so any other thing that you want to hit on over the weekend? I, I know we're counting down into college football season. So yeah, hundred percent. I mean, counting down to that, counting down to the draft. Like I love the draft as, as both of us do just that whole night is just fun. Thinking about all the guys that I enjoyed watching in college, all, all of it. We are going to do a big a couple of days, quite frankly. We are going to do a big couple of days of that Monday night. As I mentioned, Jeff Husack is going to be in with us. And then we have something Wednesday as well. Our friends with the Detroit Sports Commission is, I mean, it is, it's creeping up, guys. It's insane, too, like how crazy downtown's going to be for that, like that week stretch. No. Oh. Because we'll have Tigers baseball going on down there. Insane. Like, obviously, next week you know, sweet 16 elite eight going on downtown, like just everything going on. It's going to be awesome. Man. Um, I have a special announcement to make that I just found out as well. For those of you that at least follow the, the high school hockey scene. Uh, but before we get out of here, we have to tell you about our friends at legacy and they're going to be partying with us on opening day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, it, we're, more on that this next week. Uh, we're we're going to be out and about on opening day. Uh, great that we have a location uh, down near Corktown that we're going to be hanging out. And uh, I got a chance to talk to Joe, uh, Alex, and Dave. So these guys are going to be with us. And I need to let you know that thousands of Metro Detroiters have already called Le Legacy Partners to get help with their home and auto insurance. You need to do it as well. Call them. Get your free quote. They are going to work for you. Legacy Partners 
can get you great rates. They are one of Southeast Michigan's top independent insurance agents. They provide a full-service, one-stop solution for all your insurance needs, personal, business, large, small. They got your back. They have helped our listeners by fixing mistakes other agents have made, asking the right questions to get the right coverage put in place to properly protect you. And they save you money. Chances are, if you haven't checked your policies in the last year, you are paying too much and you could be underinsured. What are you waiting for? Call these guys. Get yourself a free quote. Start getting the protection you need and deserve. Your home, your car, life insurance, Medicare, business insurance. Call them today, 586-209-4106. It's 586-209-4106 or LegacyPartnersINS.com. Uh, Eric said one from U2. That's a great song. That is that is a great song. I, that's I don't know a lot of U2. It was like just, I've missed it. Can I separate for me, for people like me, Joshua Tree on they went downhill for I hate to be that snobby fan. I like their early stuff. I like their early stuff. Okay. Joshua Tree was kind of for me Octung Baby was the real nosedive in my opinion, but early U2. Okay. And the concert that they put on it. was unbelievable. I saw them at the party. I've hated Silverdome. U2 ever since they Apple put their music on my phone and I didn't want it. Yeah. I've just not, I, I hated him ever since. Um, that makes I, sense, right? Yeah. Okay. I skipped school after, mom, if you're watching now, I can, the truth can be told. I went to that concert in 87. Mom, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> so I'm, I'm purging my soul. So I went to that concert. Remember, I went to that concert. The next day I skipped. Nice. If you want to ground me, ground me. It's cool. <laughs> it's 37 years later. Um, all right, let's talk about Lindsay Broadwell and then we will get out of here. We appreciate you guys uh chiming in to be sure. Uh, but when it comes time to get yourself a new home, you're buying, you're selling both, you need to contact the right person. That person I recommend is Lindsay Broadwell. Your house is probably the biggest investment you will ever make, and that's why you need a pro. Lindsay grew up on the mean streets of Northville and has expanded her team all over Southeast Michigan. She's an expert in all facets of the business. Now, when it's time to move, our friend Lindsay and her team will make sure you get the most out of your house and that everything goes smoothly when you find your new home. Buyers, sellers, first-time buyers, doesn't matter. Make sure you contact Lindsay at broadwellhomes.com. She will help you with everything from start to close. Licensed realtor at Real Broker LLC. Start your search today at broadwellhomes.com. All right, I'm going to ask you, what happens in the Spartan game, Noel? Basketball game. I think it'll be tight. And is he going to win? Yeah. I saw something out of Michigan State on Thursday that I hadn't seen in a long time. Remember when I said, and I always like to call myself out, all the people, the quote-unquote experts, talked about how tough Mississippi State played. That's why I picked Mississippi State. That's why State. I picked Mississippi State. Yeah. Michigan State showed a toughness I had not seen in a long time. Baycott's a different beast. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. No doubt and about RJ, that. How do you stop R.J. Davis? I'm I'm with you. I just... I think that North Carolina team's really good. I I don't think it's me saying MSU's bad, which I don't think MSU's a great team by any means, but I, I'm more saying I think North Carolina's really good. I think Tyson's a very special player. I do. I think I think he's a, a special player, but some of the pieces I just can't were, trust were, were New York Biggs against were, Baycott at all. No, not at all. I, some of their pieces were grossly exaggerated this year. Yeah. And and like we talked about last week, I think the old bit with Michigan State basketball in the last four years has been, well, this year didn't go the way we wanted, but wait till next year. Look what we have next year. And I, it, it hasn't translated, you know? Are you ready, for, by the way, right after this? Because I'm, I'm going to turn on Purdue at your house. Yeah, that's fine. And are you ready for me to go like full gambler? Because you've never seen me in that state. I'm a different... I'm well, different. Well, that's why I have my killer attack dog right okay. here at your feet. <laughs> Just, I'm he, be is, he is screaming ready. Screaming at the TV. He Zach is, Eady better have a great half. Listen, I don't think it's going to happen today. 
but you know Purdue's losing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's not. It 100%. might. It might not be today. No. It, it might be Sunday. Pur- Purdue's gonna Purdue and Virginia set your watch to it, right? I the reason why I picked them though is because they can't. They have to show out mm-hmm. to like prove people wrong after losing to a sixteen last year. They have to. This is this is when I know the show's over. Is when he shows up. When he shows up, that's his way of saying, "Dad, time enough. It. It's time to go." So I'm going to listen to Cole uh, for Blake. We'll talk again on Monday. I'm Sean Todd. Thank you. Thanks to all of you for watching. Now make sure that I get this right, okay? Uh, like us on um, subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe. Like the video. Check out the podcast wherever you get podcasts. Apple, Spotify. All that great stuff. Check it out. Check us out on Twitter, Facebook, all the places. Like the page. All of it. Todd, can Interact, you, please. Todd, can you like tape that and play that? Because there's no way in Hades I'm going to be able to repeat that. We're, we're going to write something up for you. How about that? Yes. We can do that. That would Like and subscribe. Things. Like and subscribe. On That's the, the biggest On the podcast thing. platforms and YouTube channel. Go to the YouTube yes. channel. Like, seriously, we, you, we've we been, all right, listen, this may sound douchey, but before we get, I got to get, got to get out of here. Oh, look at my buddy, Spencer. Hey, Spencer. But you know what? We appreciate you guys all watching and um, all that. And, you know, the numbers have been great, but like the YouTube page didn't have like many likes. So they were yelling at me about it. I was like, I don't know what this shit me- crap means. Subscribe. Yeah, so subscribe or like it. Uh, make sure you pay attention to my boy, Spencer, as well. Love Spence. He's a Michigan State guy as well. All right, uh, for you're a that jerk. Was yeah, you're a you're a <laughs> that jerk. Was you know me. what? I'm sure he's a very nice gentleman. For my boy uh, Blake, for Todd, thank you very much. Have yourselves a great week, and we'll see you. Off the air with Sean Belegian, featuring Sean Belegian and Blake Matrizak. Produced by Todd Losey and Blake Matrizak. Executive produced by Sean Belegian and Todd Losey. Theme song, incidental music, and related sound effects are from Play It Loud by Jam Studio. Engineering, mixing, and graphic design support provided by the unsyndicated podcast team. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Off the Air with Sean Belegian on all your favorite channels. While you're there, be sure to rate and review the podcast. Got something to say to Sean? Call the unsyndicated hotline at 248 237 3257.